All right. Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the call and return nodes. These are a little complicated. If you are a programmer, this will make perfect sense to you. If you are not a programmer, don't worry. It's, it's going to be a little weird, but you'll kind of figure it out. So in this situation, a call and return is similar to sort of calling on a function. <laughs> Again, that makes more sense to a programmer, but it is. That is basically what it is. Excuse me. So let's go ahead. We're going to need another scene for this. We technically don't need another scene. However, it is cleaner to do it this way. So let's make a quick scene and we're going to call this functions for the sake of uh, themes. So this is a new, a brand new scene that we have called functions.ks. So here we see this is a new scenario file. Let's go ahead and, and just make this completely empty. We're going to create a label to start. We'll call this uh, function say hello. That's what this function is going to be, except. And this is important because you want to know what this is going to do because you're never going to explicitly look at this. So this is a nice way for me to know in the future when I'm looking at the functions that I've created because you will wind up having a lot. Having useful names and useful naming conventions will save you a lot of time, especially in facial expressions for characters, but we will get to that. So let's go ahead and give this function something that it's going to do. Hello, I say. And that's what it's going to do. Put smiley. See? There's our little our message. And we're going to pop this return. This is very important for, for using this call return. This is where the return goes. Right after the uh, quote unquote function. That's what I'm going to call it. It's technically, it doesn't really have a name. It could be anything. I just, calling them functions makes sense to me. Because I am actually a programmer. Let's go ahead and head back to our scene one. There it is. And let's call on our new function. So here we have, we're going to get rid of this hello just so that we don't confuse ourselves. So now this says, this is a new game project. We are going to call. So now we've dropped down a call after this is a new game project. And now we're going to pop over here to the, um, oh, I can't think of the word, the properties. And we're going to go to location. We don't want to actually have seen one this time. We're going to go to functions. We're going to say target is function say hello. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to hit save. And then after this, after this call, we're going to say that, oops, let me move this down. That was interesting. And this is how we'll know that it's, that, that it's worked correctly. So let's go ahead and hit save. And we're going to test this out. So here we have our game. This is a new game project. Hello, I say. That was interesting. So now we have called on a function. We've said that was interesting. That means that we, we left the scene and came back. So we, we actually used this call to quickly jump into another scene to access something, whether it be text or something mathematical, and then jump back. Let's talk about ways that this can be used in games that is typical to a visual novel. Affection increase. This is pretty much vital for like a dating sim, right? So let's let's go back into functions real quick. Let's say we have another function. In fact, I'll create one and we'll name this function uh, affection and then we'll say, I don't know, mcoon because that's one of the characters that we have. So this, this is going to handle uh, affection up. We're going to say specifically affection up. This is important. Um, now I know when I go to call a function, I know that, the, I mean, technically I don't even need this function thing. It's just my naming convention. Um, affection up underscore for mcoon specifically, which is a character in our character section. Yeah. See, that's him. I thought it was a different character. Whoops. Oh, well, whatever. Um, now we would come down here and grab a node that would specifically increase a variable that we set up. Uh, I don't want to overcomplicate this, but you would essentially, like we can pop some text down that says mcoon's affection increased, right? And then we hit return. So we want to go back to our game. This could be called whenever. Let's say we select a button that was like something that was good for mcoon. So, you know, it says, I don't know, do you like purple or red? We choose purple. This makes mcoon happy. We call this function. It says mcoon's affection increased. And then we go back to the game and keep on going about our way. Right? 
that's kind of what you would want in one of these scenarios. Hang on, we need to save. And we are going to go over here back to scene one. And we could say, we could change this call to affection up for M Coon. And we'll hit, we'll hit uh, play. This is a new game project. M Coon's affection increased. That was interesting. And there we go. So there's our project. There's call and return. There are like hundreds of ways that you could do this. This could be for decreasing health. This could be for decreasing magic. This could be for running a battle simulator. This could be for anything that you pretty much, the reason you would use this call return is for anything that is repeated and is always pretty much the same. You can create vast call uh, call return functions that involve, you know, a random monster selector. Anything that happens repeatedly within your game, you want to use a call return. Because then you don't need to repeatedly recreate that functionality or that scene. So anytime an, an affection increase happens, or anytime a battle happens, or anytime you level up, this will, you can create a one, run, one time only a function that would allow you to call it you know, whenever, whenever you need to. So this would all I'd be, all I would need to do. And I could do it as many times as I want. I can, you know, oops, that's not what I selected. We can do call, call and, and, and set every single one of them up to um, functions, say hello. And we come back down here. We go to functions. We say mcoon. And I mean like, oh, you know what, let's, let's switch this to mcoon. So now we have three in a row. And bam, like just like that, I've increased affection, you know, three times, assuming, of course, that this was set up to do that. See, it's going to say it three times. Three, and then it goes to, that was interesting. So this is pretty much a way to save time. And it's it's probably one of the most important to me <laughs> functionalities that they ever added to Tyranna Builder. It's my favorite thing to use because it saves so much time. <laughs> it's so awesome. I When I saw that, I was so happy. And this is an old thing. This is not even part of the new update. It's just this is like my favorite thing that they implemented into the engine. So anyways, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have, as always, if you have any questions for me in the comment section below, Go ahead and post them, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And, uh, yeah, there we go. That's that. Thank you so much for watching. That is the end of our story section, and the next thing we'll be getting into is effects.